and I only have a staff of nine So much people. need on the Cape. Wow. Oh, this revitalization of the villages. I think we need to be in different areas. I think we need to be in Falmouth, and I think we need to be in Provincetown. <laughs> Funding, funding. Did I say funding? <laughs> well, obviously money. Um, we focus on finding the money. Our, bi our biggest uh, issue is fundraising. Is I don't want to talk about money. Well, I think the challenge for Cape Cod is the um, ability for Cape Codders to continue to make a living here. Mm -hmm. To be able to make sustainable wages. That means being able to afford a house, you know, uh, educate your children and and have a nice way of life. I mean the cost of housing is really prohibitive especially for young professionals mm -hmm. and even though we have relatively speaking quite well-paid jobs it's very difficult for young people especially couples mm -hmm. to get on the Cape so that's a that's a big problem for us. What is it that we could do that would, could have an impact in a positive way mm -hmm. and we came to the conclusion that we should start shouting to the community particularly since we call it the upper middle income and upper income level people shout them look as much as we all love the Cape and Islands, there are some areas that people are having tougher times and they live down here and they need our help. Here on Cape Cod, um, I would like um, our volunteers to be seen and clearly understood as they are the critical gift to Cape Cod that Cape Cod could ever want. Um, I think they, they do what so many of us, we all do something. Some people give money, some people give blood. Uh, some people uh, serve in a soup kitchen, but they're the few people who get up and actually go out and do face-to-face, -face, uh, leave their own home and families, they're, they're really heroic. We can use almost any age, any gender, just we need hands, we need, we need educated people, we need people that want to help. I've talked to people today uh, in fact, a wonderful uh, director of the Dream Day. And they have the, you know, a wonderful camp up there in Nickerson State Park. And uh, they have the, the camp for families of terminally ill children. And we gave a grant to them. And I felt so good when I talked to her this morning um, that we did that for them. People um, understand and benefit a great deal out of being involved in community service and volunteering with any array of organization that's out there, um, helping everyone, helping everyone out. Issues are so great today and people's time are limited and funds are limited. Collaboration really is, and teamwork is the, the wave of the future. You know, I, I guess it takes leadership, uh, the people that are smart enough or good enough and to realize that, hey, if we put these two together, uh, that we'll have a unit doing both functions better. The, what we've noticed in the last 10 to 15 years is, is a shift to becoming more involved in the community. So we're partnering with businesses and sponsors and mm -hmm. really the philosophy of you support us all summer long, we need to support you. So many, we're blessed with so many nonprofits mm -hmm. here on the Cape. Mm -hmm. But by the same token, um, they have more challenges because the usual funding sources are shrinking. The, mm -hmm. the foundations uh, around the country uh, are earning less and have less of a corpus to give from. And the governmental agencies are cutting back. And so the local demand is, is so needy. And that's why we have more golf outings, golf tournaments, auctions, bike races, and, mm -hmm. and the nonprofits need to fundraise. But, I believe it's a wonderful opportunity for businesses like ours to encourage nonprofits to operate in a more business-like manner, to, to um, collaborate, partner up, maybe even merger. We've really upgraded the quality of our program. We offer free tutoring and homework help every day after school. And we have a teacher who does that, and we do career prep for teens, um, but because our quality of our programs and the enrichment we offer our kids has really increased dramatically over the last three or four years. We're getting more kids after school, which is really important. Our impact has grown. We've, our membership overall grew over 100, 150 this year. And I think the kids just need an extra person in their lives, someone that's not their parent, 
someone that is not the authority figure per se, but a, 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 a person with a thoughtful person that they can talk to kind of as a sounding board. And we have a beautiful, pristine environment that we need to keep that way because that's our calling card. That's the reason people want to come here to visit or to retire. And it's the reason people will relocate here, um, make it their home base, but maybe they travel the world for their business. So keeping that environment safe and clean and pure is, is tantamount. I'd love to see a couple of more towns have um, set in place uh, zoning bylaws that would um, better uh, revitalize their downtowns. At the same time, we have got to rezone to protect other areas that are very important. In one year, I would love it if there was a blueprint for the Cape, what we want to protect and where, and what we want to grow and where. If I could wave a magic wand and have one thing changed, it would be to stop putting our wastewater underground. And the Cape, as many people know, but a lot of people don't know, the Cape, most of the, most of the homes and businesses on the Cape depend on septic systems which are right there on their property, underground. They usually work fine. You know it if they don't work. Um, but all of that wastewater is going into the groundwater system, which is out of sight so people don't see it, and it eventually discharges at the ocean. I think the biggest thing that, that Cape Cod, Martha's Vineyard, and Nantucket are missing is a real energy strategy, a regional look at energy issues. And in part, um, the problem is the Cape Wind Project in that it has divided local communities. Um, so it's a problem, in that it, and yet at the same time, it's an opportunity. It has also um, brought energy to the forefront of local discussions. Because we have the green, the green piece of it, using renewable energy, a lot of environmental people that normally would never have cared about what we're doing are really involved. And you know, the solar, the whole solar thing is so cool because you can actually see how it's harvesting solar energy. It's all computerized. I mean, we went from the 19th century to having a gallery with no electrical outlets to a completely state-of-the-art building. What we'd like to do is to help anything elevate beyond the point that it would have gone on its own. So if you can stimulate uh, an organization and make them hit higher targets, great. Uh, I think the specific thing is to also constantly examine where are you giving and is it doing, is it doing benefit. Oftentimes persons who look upon the Cape and the Islands as this wonderful paradise, it is. But we seek to attract the interest of the second homeowners who in Boston, Philadelphia, New York, Atlanta may be very, very generous and very influential in that community about solving human service mm -hmm. needs. Mm -hmm. They sort of don't necessarily see them in this community and our, our focus is to try and engage those persons who ultimately might retire here. I think it all comes down to the fact that although this is a wonderful place to live, and it's beautiful and environmentally, we need the people and the resources to make the good things happen. Mm -hmm. And we don't have enough people organized in many ways. We have the resources, but they don't communicate amongst themselves as well as I think they need. I think we need a lot more volunteer coordination because it's an amazingly rich place to, in which to be involved.